We're out here. Back. Let's continue with a little more of uh, the adventure on the moon. The sense is present on the moon no longer. If you need not, if you need not follow, then I beg you to stay and listen to what I have to tell you. The zodiac and the end of all things. Before we speak at length, I believe a change of surrounds is in order. I have more than ill tidings to share, you see. I sensed others arriving not long ago. Through my convenience with Heidelin have grown though my communities with Heidelin have grown frequent, I have learned enough from her to know to teach your comrades. As luck would have it, they have already reached my abode. Come, let us join them. break.
ऐसा नहीं आ सकता Survived. I'm still in front of it, but it's close to the time for more. Gordon, Ariane J. Uh, don't mind my luck. Okay, I look better now. Okay. Thank goodness you aren't harmed. We did what we could to subdue the tempered before making our way here. Not without casualties, unfortunately. Some few detonated explosives killing themselves and others. The contingency healers had their hands full, tending to the injured and enthralled when they, we took our leave. Lest you wonder, Mrs. Kral hath been delivered unto their care, serving as a conduit to Highland's power hath taken its toll, and she will recover in due course. As for Alphano and Alize, they insisted on remaining in Gardemald while we... we Three rushed to your aid. It appears, however, that matters have been already came to come to a conclusion. But what matter of conclusion, if I may ask? Is this the ally whom Heidelin bade you seek out? He is not unlike the Shades of Amarok. <laughs> not unlike, perhaps, but not the same. I was created by Hydaelyn together with this place. It has ever been my duty to keep vigil over Zodiac, or rather, it was my duty. Exposition. Zodiac is no more. Not without consequence, I'm afraid. For now, the delicate weave of the star, pre preserved by his presence, will begin to unravel. If you mean to avert the final days, you shall have need of... Oh, you won't mind. My attempts to forestall Z Zodiac's relief have all but exhausted my strength. If you might allow me to rest a short while, I shall share with you all I can. Please do. We need not, you need not exert yourself on our account. These crystals contain records of your time here, yes? May we peruse them while we wait? Um. By all means. If you would review them chronologically, might I suggest beginning with those on the upper floor? I shall leave that to you. To you, Amigos, while I see what can be gleaned from the crystals on these lower levels.
into the crystal ancient knowledge of the zodiac flows through your mind. They lay sun ring, you know, uh, uh, moralities, uh, abnorm abnormalities detected. Daily summary, no abnormalities, norm abnormalities detected. Daily summary, no ab abnormalities detected. These appear to be records of a long, long moon vigil on the moon, dating back to the beginning of the zodiac's prison. Gaze into the crystal knowledge of the past calamities flow through your mind. The records describe how, with each rejoining, Zodiac's thirst for freedom grew, as did the strain on the brands. Maintaining Zodiac's imprisonment appears to tax Heidelin greatly. Gaze into the crystal knowledge of past rejoinings flows through your mind. The records describe the watcher's efforts to prepare to leave that good yard work free from his opinions. The records go on to describe maintenance carried out regularly with the elaborates, though it's not clear who or what they are. With you getting the crystal record of unexpected visitor flows through your mind, the record notes that the Watcher's Museum with Olympus is spotted on the moon, though clearly not for the first time. It is clear he and his brother have a keen interest in freeing Zodiac from his prison, and yet they have made no attempt to destroy the brands. Perhaps they prefer he remain hidden from mortal eyes until the final rejoining. Perhaps they realize we would never dare break harm to, to Zodiac so long as he remains imprisoned. Did you learn anything of the import? Exposition. So it is as we expected. Maintaining the brands required a great deal of her energy and focus, and this cost has grown higher with each rejoining. That would explain why contact with her has become ever rather infrequent since the seventh Umbral Calamity. I too have a rather startling discovery. This heavenly body we know as Moon is was in fact created by Heidelin. When the Watcher said he had created, he was created together with this place, I thought he only meant this facility. Truly, Heidelin's powers are far beyond anything I could have mentioned. It is we who should thank you. The records stored here are nothing short of extraordinary. There is much we could learn of Zodiac and his imprisonment. But perhaps you could offer us more focused guidance. Pray, tell us of the calamity that came before and comes now again. Before the Great Summer, there was but a single world, Etheris. Etheris. Etheris? One day, from within the earth, a terrible cry issued forth, infecting the earth and found change in all the air. Not exempt from creation magic from the world, giving shape and form to thoughts of consciousness and despair. The 
first the phenomenon was in the Eucharistic region, but quickly so so very quickly spread and engulfed the whole of the star. Were the ancients ever able to deduce its source? They were not. However, the convocation struck upon a method to predict where next the corruption would, would manifest. The currents which course through the land and seas. That which flows through the very air. And those of the celestial nature which encompass both our star and its Celestial currents. I cannot say I am familiar with the concept. What I expect it to be, few scholars of our time have of their occurrences of their existence. Their invaluable knowledge helped us to better understand the nature of the calamity. Like the terrestrial ones of Earth and air, the celestial currents form a vast network. The etherical distribution is not consistent. Convocation soon realized that cyclic incidents occurred in regions where the flow was weakest. Correlation without a clear cause, ultimately. Nevertheless, our closer study as the pregnancy of ether was observed in nearby currents. And so they sought a means to harness the forces of darkness, of activity and growth. Thus was Zodiac conceived. No less a power than a god's could set right the laws of nature and quicken the flow of ether within the star. Precisely. With the advent of Zodiac, our end was averted. Emmett Selk claimed that those who summoned Hydaelyn did so because they saw Zodiac's power as a threat. Is that true? Indeed, there was a faction opposed to Zodiac's creation, but their aim was not to make it. He understood the continued preservation of the natural order was dependent on his very existence. Until we could identify and address the underlying cause of the final days, his departure would set in motion those apocalyptic forces once more. Eidolin recognized this as well, and so rather than destroy, she summoned Zodiac herself and the star into lesser reflections that she might confine him in this place. Intent is not always in accordance with work. Hydaelyn and Zodiac are both constructs of man, approximations of perfection limited to our own imperfections. Zodiac was without question most powerful, more powerful to having been born from the sacrifice of God for the Pharisees. 
Thus, was it necessary for Heidelin to commit herself to the king's defeat? No more effort was made to confine him. Containing the bronze taxes are great. With what power she did spare, she cried out to any of the innocent and offered her blessing to those who needed her. Though it is likely within her power to do so, I believe she did not wish to speak to both the theorists and her history. Like Zodiac, Heidelin's purpose is a reflection of her creators. They wish to look to the future and not be the past. The Asians set in motion seven rejoinings before we came to oppose them. How many more worlds would have been lost had we not placed our faith in her? How many more souls living in the present would have been snuffed out for the sake of those long dead? Well, in light of recent events, I see no reason to doubt your words. And even if Hydaelyn is not a god in truth, if Minfilia believed that we should trust in her plans, then I choose to do just that. Which brings me to a rather important question. Let's suppose we try but fail to stop this second coming of the final days. Should the source fall, what will become of the other worlds? The human creatures more signal than you know. Bring you into the source and its reflections will share it in its day. Beautiful sight. Yes, but what is it? I only knew better than any of her power and wisdom absolute. Each of us ever struggled to hold through the ark and its feet in bed. She feared the worst, and so made preparations in the event of his demise that would be a contingency. This moon is more than a prison, it is a vessel capable of bearing the people of the grass to save heart. We do not go far to find these pirates, in fact, I'm really happy to talk to them. In fulfilling his final duty as Roger and the Dark Guard. Now we're starting to get coffers for uh, gear that is higher than my current. Oh, it's a chainsaw. You hear that? Let's see that little chainsaw. here. A 
The long last watcher is ready to fill, fulfill its final duty. Time has come for you to be on your way. The crater, uh, the crater at the heart of Mare Lamentorum, where Zodiac was imprisoned, is not so easily traversed, however. Let us call upon Argos, the familiar whom you met earlier. You should have no trouble bearing you across. As Heidelin created me as the jailer, so did she create Argos as the guard. It is his nature to appear when needed, and yet he is nowhere to be found. Strange. We have the imbalancing of ether has affected him. Let us make for the crushing brand and attempt to to call upon him there. You need but recall the path that you walked uh, with Argos before, and you will find your way. If he hoppers, labors in service of Hyland's plans, I see no reason to do as he suggests. Shall we make for this crushing brand? I think the assumption is that uh, the other three are following me while I take this trip. The place we seek is just ahead, at the Chloros... Chlorophos Grot. You see, Argos cannot manifest without sufficient concentrations of any ether. You would be hard-pressed to find a greater confluence than inside this cavern. Come on.
Yes, here we'll do nicely. The lunar uh, spongoi. I'm going to draw ether from the ground, which is then dispersed in the air. At present, however, the ambient energies are not quite sufficient for others to manifest. But you'd be willing to spare some of your own to help the spongoi out of the in a flash. He seems glad to see you again. Should the need arise, he is able to create reflections of himself on a wall. Though I assure you it's an over reflection which accompanied you earlier in the brand. No, Argos is quite needed to be at your side then as he is now, it seems. I cannot recall when, when last he showed such an affinity for anyone. Indeed, I thought him more likely to shy away from you. Perhaps it's more of a sense of duty that compelled the deity before. Um. As for your companions... Unexpected, but greatly appreciated. I believe you're, we are all ready. Um. Yes, yes, then we cross the castle. Your destination is the structure there, there across the great old darkness. But climb onto Argos's back and he will take you, take care of the rest. Once you arrive, you should not take long to find the ship's crew. The facility is designed to rouse them from their slumber in the event of the Ark's destruction. Need their counsel. Together, we may guide the star and its people to kinder fate. There is, this is where we part ways, but know that I shall ever be watching and praying for your success. Argos favors you. Favors you with what was certainly described as a conspiratorial grin. <laughs> uh, ally assurances, the assurances notwithstanding, we cannot be certain what awaits us on the other side. So perhaps it would be best if we did not all go at once. I propose the two of you cross first. Well, thank God I didn't know what he Yet permeates from the crater, remnants of Zodiac, looks like. It's a little further. is enormous, though it's hardly surprising given the size of the average emblem team. Apologies for the wait. Right then, let us head inside and...
intriguing, and a means by which she conserves its energy may happen. Well, I certainly wouldn't want him to blink out of existence on our account. Hopeful as he's been. Thank you, Argos. We'll take things from here. Argos is to remain without. Let us not keep him waiting over long. Scales reminiscent to Omerat, or rather the replica we visited from the first. Truly a marvel beyond description. Our moonship pilot should be around here somewhere. Is that right? The 243rd inspection is a mite ahead of schedule, but it is of the utmost importance, for Zodiac, alas, is no more. As of now, our mighty moon has a new purpose, to bear the people of Aetherius to safety! Our time is come, my friends! Be swifter than swift. There is much to do before our guests arrive. I expect your workstations to be immaculate. And don't forget to relay our signal to Aetherius. Questions? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Then hop to it! Is a rather curious crew she hath chosen. Their endearing forms intended to ease the passengers' hearts, perhaps. Perhaps? <laughs> Thacker is just like, uh, what? Tankard Scub's dumbfounded expression suggests he is still struggling to comprehend the spectacle he just witnessed. They must be the Lopperts, uh, mentioned in the Watcher's records. Not at all what I expected, but the Watcher did bid us heed their counsel. I assume one who gave their rousing speech was their leader that we might have to ask about in order to track them down. 
Come on, then, let us be about it. The leader crew, not me, I'm afraid. It's anyways the name. I'm in charge of the construction and maintenance of the air the atmospheric circulation system. Only the crispest, cleanest air for the people of the terrace, and that that's what prompts. Anyway, Oh, the fun the traders in Theros is getting up to, and I thought of myself, hey, I can do that. Well, here I am, eagerly awaiting your patronage and bi-colored gemstones. Now I've access to the region's gemstone exchange. Three bi-colored gemstones for a variety of rare and exclusive items. Successfully completing local flight and fates will allow for the safety delivery of goods in the region, increasing the number of items available for exchange. Get here. Who let you in? Why wasn't I told? Are you giving the orders? Me? Oh, yes, of course. As the only one around here capable of doing anything properly, it falls to me to take charge of the others. Well, well, looks like you beat us here. Your friends, I take it? Is this all of them? A group comprised entirely of children. What must their parents be thinking? This isn't a nursery after all, though perhaps you should build one. Or did we build one already? No matter where you needn't worry your pretty little heads, all of will be well, I promise you. But goodness me, you shouldn't be standing about gobbing. I should take you to meet the others. go run back along back toward the end until you'll find a path that leads to the central platform on the upper level. Upper floor. There's no wrong way to reach it. It's a huge glowing ball at the center, so if you, you should find yourself lost. I shall gather the others meet you there. Well then, back to the upper floor it is.
Okay. Just had to do it for quick reference. Very important. plans. You might say I'm her right paw. <laughs> Nothing weighs the name, map reader and navigator of the heavens. Pleasure to meet you all, but I'm still trying to make sense of this. Confusion and bewilderment are completely understandable. Fear not, I shall walk you through it. The people of Etherius, through no fault of your own, I'm sure, set in motion a series of events that, unfortunately, culminated in Zodiac's obliteration. Acutely aware of the imminent crisis, your parents sent you little ones on ahead while they began the necessary preparations. further. Here, we have Etheris, your home, and the moon, where we are now. Without Zodiac around to keep things lively, so to speak, the celestial currents of the star have doubtless begun to degrade. of apocalyptic proportions will be visited upon Atheris, bringing an end to all life. Very sad, that. So too hath the Watcher claimed. By thine unperturbed countenance, I gather this eventuality was anticipated. The doom and gloom? Oh yes, quite expected. If you will, that if there is, is a delicious carrot that I've forgotten to eat and left out in the midday sun. The most earnest wishes or prayers will not stop it from rotting to the core. So sadly, there's nothing to be done but to abandon said carrot, if there is, in case the metaphor is lost on you, to its grisly fate. And this moon will serve as the vessel to deliver us to a new home. Just so! We will gather up as many people, supplies and resources as our stores will hold. And then, 
Once everyone is aboard, it's off to another star! Easier said than done, admittedly, for one does not simply hop from star to star on a whim. Which is precisely why we've spent countless years constructing the most propulsive of propulsion systems! We ought to make it to our destination in two shakes of a rabbit's tail. Impressive technology. I dare say it is beyond anything we have ever seen. No need to shower us with praise. All we've done is faithfully carry out the instructions left to us by Hydaelyn. Back in the old days, when she was still just Venar, she was dedicated to the study of the world and its inner workings. And the Watcher, the real one, not the simulacrum you met, was one of her fellow researchers. We and this wondrous vessel, masquerading as a moon, are products of their knowledge and know-how. There's certainly more to you all than meets the eye. Might I ask where exactly you intend to take us? We identified a few promising candidates for resettlement some time ago, but we cannot guarantee that they are fit for habitation. Moreover, the ship can only travel in short bursts. We intend to go down our list, hopping from star to star, until we find one suitable for resettlement. No need to worry, though. The vessel is being refurbished with accommodation for an extended stay as we speak. While we did have to rely upon outside help to determine what amenities were essential, I dare say we have risen to the challenge. Help? From who? <laughs> From you and yours! Who else? Each time we woke to perform regularly scheduled maintenance, we were greeted by the resources you sent us. What better way to learn about preferences and proclivities of our present-day charges? Ah, oh, but you're still adorable little children. Perhaps your elders were responsible for the deliveries. I'm not sure what led you to conclude otherwise, but I can assure you that we are all grown men and women. And I very much doubt my elders know this place exists. Much less how to send you so much as a starlight missive. What? Then who in blazes let you on my moon? Hydaelyn actually sent us. Hydaelyn herself led you here. You don't say! Well, that's really not children. Then why are you so small and stunted? Like little baby carrot people. Well, Amorotines were a great deal taller. In the present day, persons of such prodigious size are exceedingly rare. So, you're saying everyone's not like the Watcher? Oh, confound it all! Someone could have at least scribbled a note about your profound miniaturization! That tome in thy possession. Oh, this? One of the first books sent to us. A compendium of the people of Atheris, with a few blank pages at the back for minor corrections and updates as needed. The sum total of our knowledge of your kind is contained in these pages. I thought it was abridged and made small for our benefit, but this isn't a regular-sized book, is it?
Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about your terrestrial collaborators. Yes, yes, in due time. But first, I'd like to hear more about you, if it's all the same. I'd rather not risk any other complications due to outdated knowledge of our passengers-to-be. Slight complication. You know what? And then... If they think about it, because everything's going to be like a lot smaller, they're going to have a lot more room. Possibly be able to fit more people. With the final days fast approaching, Living Way is keen to complete her preparations. Right then, now that you're here, we need you to teach. <clears throat> we need you to teach us all about all you can about your people. And wait, wouldn't be too. Be long before the final days are upon us and all that terrible grandeur. So it's imperative that we be prepared to see our passengers. If there's anything, anything at all that can that may displease them, it must be addressed post haste. An address to we shall. Here at Best Ways Bureau, we are Bureau, we are assembling everything required to offer our guests the best way forward. <clears throat> we have produced myriad of many myriad of amenities. We understand to be essential for day to day, really. I wish to hear your opinions on them. I'm sure you will work the Panetta, so why don't we start with the food stuffs? Meet me in the Caratorium, and we'll see you about fighting your bellies. She does want for enthusiasm. The notion of a theorist, a theorist rotting to its core, being a matter of course, is rather, is rather concerning, though. Nevertheless, let us take this opportunity to learn more of the Lomperts in this visit. Alright, your copper, it's 5.33, so... Ears are more like nose ears or brown ears. And you think, great, nice big ship with uh, uh, for uh, just little creatures. Everything will be perfectly safe. No enemies. Nice. They've got Machina to help them out. It's, it's so nice. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I think something's gone wrong with some of your machines. Welcome to the Caratorium, where we create prototypes of the various sundries required by, by our soon-be passengers. Allow me to introduce the head of foodstuff production. Cooking way. Pleasure to meet you all. 
Our work has involved no small amount of trial and error, and after many, many cycles of painstaking labor, I dare say we have created the finest cuisine our guests could ask for. We learned all about the essential nutrients for a healthy and balanced diet from the reference manuals we received, materials we received. I am practically warned the, word, warned the words from these invaluable pages. Naturally, we also consider the ease of growth and production. We will not want for ingredients. I must insist you try some of those fresh spark recently prepared on count, counter flow because we just woke up and we're, we're all quite finished. Up along the platform, up along the platforms here, and you'll find a storage unit for the bursting with delectable delights. Help yourself to anything you like. Way. This doesn't require this doesn't require a debate. We have work to do, so quit dragging your feet and get to it. You open the storage grate and find a rainbow a rainbow colored assortment of carrots. For the unassuming orange there. In front to tip no scratches or blemishes while this immaculate specimen nevertheless is not for its excessive length and girth, one might think it was a normal jerk. In second thought, you'd like to simply um, take an obscenely large carrot for now. You know, due to its bizarre qualities, it would be prudent to ask cooking away whether it's safe to eat. They did any of our selections at your must. What is it? Um, all this time was carrots. Ah, fine choice. One of my personal favorites, actually. Please dig in. I would be here to, to hear what you think. With great trepidation, you take a bite out of the carrot. There's a satisfying crunch as you sink your teeth into the orange skin and a warm, tingly sensation runs down your spine with the second bite of wave of euphoria washes over you, drown in bliss. At last, as you finish, the elation fades, leaving you with a desperate craving for another carrot. What did you think? Unlike anything you've ever tasted, yes? The carrot of happiness is full of bursting with nutrients and guaranteed to leave you feeling satiated. It's stapled among us lumperets. There are plenty of other varieties too. Bleeding carrots to improve blood flow. Dream carrots to help with sleep. sleep. If you, so we see, we have a carrot for every occasion. I can certainly see demand for this in Charlene. <laughs> What in blazes is that? I take a U2 out of a wide variety of carrots to choose from and what else? Uh, yeah. If I may ask, what exactly did these collaborators share with you about cuisine and they're surely you're aware that we have an abundance of dishes and foods you could emulate? Of course we are, but, well, it was only quite re recently that we established contact. Even holding a conversation was a struggle at first, so imagine our surprise when they sent a mountain of books and documents with no clear instructions. The sheer amount of information was overwhelming. If it wasn't for the, that encyclopedia I found, it would have been a loss where to begin. Oh, this is the new one. And so we decided, rather than divide our resources to prepare a variety of middle and potentially unsatisfying meals, we would be more efficient to devote our efforts in the production of a single perfect food. 
That's all about good, and man can li cannot. But man cannot live on raw carrots alone. You considered cooking them? You mean steaming, boiling, roasting, and the like? I suppose we could prepare the carrots in other ways. But our primary concern was efficiency. So more efficient than sinking your teeth into a carrot fresh from production. Rather strange approach to take for one named cooking way, isn't it? Well, technically speaking, cooking way is my given name. When first created, we were all named in the old tongue, you know, but otherwise impenetrable, impenetrable parlance of the watcher speaks. After we received a great tome of words, a dictionary that is, from, from our collaborators, we learned your language. Adverbs, groans, present con continuous verb conjunctions, just the basics. Then we found the terms related to our given tasks and used them to form new names. Names, aren't they helpful? No, not really, but it does explain a great deal. Wherefore didst thou, thou kind, deem such a change necessary? When the rest of your people arrive, we want to be certain they understand immediately which each of us does. We've never been able to pronounce our original names anyways. I see. I hope our critiques such as they are are helpful to you. Though, if you would decide to, to preserve flora and fauna from a theorist as well, you may be able to offer the, the passengers a more balanced diet. Until such day, one prey, prey comes sooner than later, it would appear there is naught but carrots on the menu. I think we'd, we've had, had our fill of carrots for now. Now, let's move on to other necessities, shall we? Our clothing production is sure to impress. This way. I'll say this, there's probably a theme. possible if I went the other way I would have
four of ten. Here we are, the Apparel Production Station. We have chosen to employ more traditional methods for this task, creation magics. Hi, Delina, and if wisdom blessed us with the self-same affinity for magic our people possessed. We have other amazing talents, of course, but I know you're dying to hear of them, but I will regale you with the details another time. That said, we did run into a spot of trouble at first. Our magic alone was not sufficient to see our work done. In the end, we discovered the crystallized ether was a wonderful cat catalyst that would provide us with the, the extra beast mm -hmm. we needed. I have that is the source. Ah, the sweet sound of recognition. We will always be impressed to hear that you read all about your habits of changing attire to match your chosen profession. For the sake of efficiency, I presume. And this has also been taken into account with our designs. But why not... Why take my word for it when you can simply try on our clothes? Make yourselves known to the workers and they will see to the rest. It's you, one of the visitors from Etheris. Goodness me, mapping where it wasn't kidding. You really are smaller than the water. Oh, right. You're here to try on a set of clothes, yes? What would you have me fashion for you today? I don't that in body is by bloodlust. Well, let me take a moment. There you are. All finished. Perfect fit, if I do say so myself. I'd be lying if I said I understood what bloodless is, but I assume it's something you enjoy. I made certain the clothes are flexible yet sturdy enough to endure whatever it is you plan to do while wearing them. Would you look at that? Speechless. And there, I thought you may not like it. If you're mind to try, try something else, why not speak to my fellow artisans? I'm sure you'll be happy to oblige. Let's continue wearing these garments in order to progress. You will change back to your normal garments if you move too far, far away. Look at your map for the garment changes this area of effect. Speak with the restless lopperant to restore or prolong the garment change. Fortunately, if you do everything right away, you won't have to worry about it if you just, just, just follow the guidelines. It's just a glamour. So really you see, when I come here, I save my regular tire. When I come here, I don't. Uh, also, they gave me a mask. I assume that whatever I had selected on that would affect what type of clothes I have. Like 
either take her in supporters because they don't care or or support. Supporter. Hopefully I avoid this one. Yep. Nope! Here it comes. No one said you were coming? Oh, how, how, how can I help you? you? Want to try my clothes? Really? Well, of course. It would be my honor. Did you have anything in mind? I for clothes with an old design. I, I think I can handle that. Let's see. This should do. Some of my best work yet. You're a strange one, aren't you? Honestly, I wasn't sure what to do when you didn't ask for anything specific. I take my work seriously, however, and I'm never one to disappoint. That ensemble is a blend of concepts and married professions, all pur all purpose attire for the modern man of a theorist. I was worried how the concept would turn out when I'm put to the proof, but it looks stunning on you. And once you go and show living way, I'm sure she'll be eager to see what you come up with. You must continue wearing these garments in order to progress. You'll change back to normal garments if you move too far away. Look to your map for the garment change to area effect. Look with the jubilant rubber to restore or prolong the garment change. I mean, look at this. Oh, it's threatening that looks. I mean, maybe the 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 wraps around the the wrists might be kind of cool, but the this the. They need to hire new fashion designers. That's all I gotta say. Even the Charlian stuff looks better than that. My, don't you look splendid? The result of what of much trial and error, I know quality work when I see it. Shh, I didn't speak. I can see your adoration for the moon and the operates in your eyes. No doubt your friends feel the same, having sampled our creations. No, we're just trying to be polite. Sorry to have kept you waiting. They insisted we sample all their concepts ere we returned. Verily, it is an ensemble most becoming. <laughs> it's just all the fuck. I think it's best that we return these clothes. short while later. I was so confident our garments would meet with your approval. Whatever are we doing wrong? The watcher taught, uh, taught us that in his time everyone wore the same robes. To do otherwise would, was against social etiquette. We thought we would appeal to modern taste by tailoring the robes, robes to specific professions, but... Please, you mustn't be so hard on yourself. Should result to evacuating the people of the theos, we certainly have need to go tired. 
It's clear you spared no effort in addressing our needs, but we must understand that we're not quite so homogenous. Speaking for myself, that I, what I wear now better suits my taste, even if it is of inferior make. But there are others whose choices may be influenced by traditions or personal experiences. Rather than make assumptions for the whole, we must consider the individual and their potential preferences. Inferior make. We are underestimating the complexity and desire of your people. Ah, even if we memorized every town we received, I doubt we would have fared much better. Maybe you're doing, we're doing you a disservice trying to shower you with our bubbles of frivolity. Flippery. Or flippery. Thinking it, it was for your benefit when you'd be better off on your own. There are some who might agree. People who prefer to keep others at arm's length, even when they know they shouldn't. As one such form of fool, I'd like to ask you a question. This plan to evacuate and escape the final days, did it account for the reflections of the source as well? Um, not that I'm aware of. We are born of Hydaelyn's love for their theorists and the salvation of the people on that star and that star alone has, has ever been our aim. Sure, it's better to devote ourselves to saving one world than to divide our efforts across 14 and risk failing them all. I suppose you're right. Anyway, might we have, have leave to explore best ways to be unattended? You've given us much to think about. Well, certainly. Until later, then. If I may, I should like to accompany the wild lover. Lo lo really? I mean, you're more than welcome to come. There was actually something I wish to speak to you about. Let's be off then, shall we? to the city in Lombard. We're back. Let's talk to the fidgeting boss. Uh, uh, my apologies. I wasn't trying to spy or anything. Everyone's been talking about the visitors from the Therese, and I wanted to see if what all the fuss was about. 
was excited at first, but now, now I'm worried. What if the people of the terrace refuse to come? What if they can't save them? Uh, it's clear we've made a mess of things. Oh, but wait, we still haven't visited the domiciles. Once you see them, you'll understand how wonderful the moon truly is. I'm sure of it. We we'll go waiting for you by the teleporter near the entrance. Oh, my name's Growing Way, by the way. See you soon. I'm going to cheat and just teleport closer. <laughs> You're here. You're here. You're really here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, sorry. What should I call you? Uh, Imago Swindwar. Imago Swindwar, right? Eh? Crikey! Even your names are amazing. Well, Imago, we'll be using we'll be using this teleport to tend to the residential area. Whenever you're ready. Ready in the teleporter. Living quarters restricted due to reconstruction. Then where is it? Oh no! A private audience, as thou didst request, for reasons I know not. Caution. I'd rather I didn't have to ask the question at all, but I take my responsibilities very, very seriously. Do you and your friends by any chance find our accommodation wanting? Be honest, brutally even. It would be ungracious of me to belittle the efforts of thee and thine. sentiment, really, but the disappointment is writ plain on your comrades' faces. It's all the more frustrating since no one will come out and say what they find wanting. If there are faults in our work, we need to know. We can, we will do better, but time is not on our side. Final days will wait for no one. If your people are to be saved, we must take quick and decisive action. This vessel must serve as a home for as many passengers as possible for far longer than we may like. Which brings me to my request. Our collaborators on Atheris are doing what they can to prepare for the voyage. Would you be willing to go and lend them a hand? Having seen the moon for yourself, you could speak to its many splendors, learn what else they might require, and assuage whatever concerns they have. Wherefore wouldst thou entrust me with such a task? How to put it? You're the only one who appears not to be wholly unsatisfied with our work. Oh, quite good at pretending that's the case, at least. Calm, collected, tactful to a fault. Very particular with your words, too. You understand that, in the face of great danger, one cannot pursue perfection at the expense of practicality. The difficult choices, 
must often be made for the greater good. <sighs> and so fate doth conspire to set my feet upon this path once more. Come again? Ah, idle musings. Tis no trifle, thou dost ask. Yet full well do I understand the urgency and necessity. I... Oh, dear me! Dear me! I was terribly sorry for the mix-up! <laughs> it's a bit of a malfunction. I hadn't realized the residential quarters were inaccessible, you see. But you're still in one piece. So, all's well that ends well, yes? Uh, won't happen again. I promise. That was a better scene. Promise me more careful from now on. Since the residential courts are cl closed, I rerouted the teleporter to allow travel between floors instead. Hopefully, it proves useful in the meantime. I sh a shame you cannot see it though. I really would have liked it. You now travel between the upper and lower floors, the best way to go or by the teleporter. Upgrade and die. That guy has a color scheme. I can stick to it. Alright. Alright, going away. What else can you ship? I kind of want to. But personally. Okay, so. Problem with playing a game like this. If this was DMD. Basically, you have more uh, freedom to to do what you you would like to do. After observing what happened with Orange, I would have started slowly walking up and just start politely. She asked to be brutally honest about what we found wanting. What we found wanting. I think part of it is we think they're really excitable and don't want to get them too excited. Oh, it may, it may not have been, it seemed like it, but it, we've been planning for this far longer than it, I care to admit. Every time we woke up, we had long discussions about how to save as many, many of you as we can. And it felt like everyone had an opinion on this or that. But the one thing we all agreed upon was that the people that theirs, theirs wouldn't take action to save themselves, though it was far too late. That's why we're striving to make the moon a vibrant, magical place they'd hop a chance to visit, rather than waiting for the flames of oblivion to get them, get them off their tails and force them to accept our invitation. The residential quarters may, may not be up to the necessary standards just yet, but there are plenty of other places worth seeing. We'll already take a look at the curatorium, but wait until you see what we're waiting in at the east end of the borough. For the way. Get You're here. Through this door is Greatest Inns Veil. It was named as such because it's the veil to end all veils. The most 
beautiful forests you ever see. You understand the people of the terrace enjoy taking leisurely walks through natural spaces and the like, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. How about we start with a nice stroll to the fountain? This way. This doesn't look like a forest. Kind of artificial. Okay, go on. I'll tell you this, this does not look like a forest. So what do you think of the forest? Positively ple pleasant, simply blind? Can't see the forest or the trees. Can't see any thing. What are those out there? There's those transcendent burying your face in a trip about to take it a good long whip. I couldn't see the forest from the trees. I put in my tire. You're in the forest right now. Been in this place with a challenge. Let me tell you, since you were born here, you've never seen trees in person before. They're never forest. The information sent by our collaborators was quite enlightening, but after much deliberation, we decided to use crystal and construct in place of living trees. And thanks to our atmosphere and circulation system, this place produces air as clean as we'll find in the forest, in a forest of the fairs. Fountain will be on, behind us, powered by a rather large crystal, adorning its cup. And its vital role is supplying us with fresh water. Much time and effort is spent making it the most spherical spheres, and I dare say the unparalleled ground will speak for itself. I enjoy nothing more than a nice long stretch and spot of relaxation whenever I come up here. You look like you do with the stretch yourself. That's the spirit. Feel more relaxed simply watching you. It's like work worth the many years spent building this place. It's not too much to ask. I've always had a dream of mine to take a walk through this forest with someone from the fairs. Maybe. The wind? Oh, he's still my covering whiskers. Her ways now accompany you. Keep the mate your eye in order to proceed with quest objectives. You can leave growing way behind by entering a dif different area from too much distance between you or speaking with him and selecting the options of our ways. If you wish to have growing way, accompany your dad to return and speak with him if you are in the location. Oh, 
I was thinking, Emigos, that I could be more helpful to you by teaching you a little about the moon and what it is to do. When you were first created, the moon's sole purpose was to hold Zodiac, and there was absolutely nothing to be found here. Eventually, Hardlin gave us our first task. Furnish, furnish the moon with propulsion systems capable of facilitating travel to other stars. It sounds impressive, and I suppose in, in some respects it is, but it is only possible thanks to all the knowledge Hardlin shared with us. We also had a lot of time to get it done. 6,000 years, give or take. But anyway, let's keep going. This may come to surprise, but we didn't begin building the habitable areas until after the propulsion systems were re ready. Considering how long it took, I wish we'd started sooner. Who would have thought we'd needed 4,000 years to make all this? It certainly wasn't, wasn't it wouldn't work you dead brush either. We had to create infrastructure and countless support systems, some of which wouldn't be operational until hundreds of years later. And there was the brief period where our productivity came to a screeching halt, when the bizarre red satellite was sent up from Ethereus. Elegant's mischief, I think. We thought maybe some new nefarious actor was colluding with the Zodiac. All we could do was stand by and brace ourselves for the worst. I can't tell you how relieved we were when Heidel informed us of, this, of its destruction. Oh yes, there was some joyous humming that day. Say, do you, do you notice anything you know, about the treetops? I mean, apart from the fact that there are massive crystals in the trees. I'll give you a hint. It's the golden rings emanating from the from the golden spheres. Along with the device placed fixed near the ceiling, they fulfill a similar role to our sun and do and do so better even. The sun and similar celestial objects in the great expanse radiate energy that is harmful to our bodies your bodies. These rings shield you from the energy while allowing you to bathe in the perfect amount of sunlight, or rather a close approximation to it. Pretty impressive, don't you think? Oh, and if you look closer, you'll see different types of trees have ever so slightly different curvatures. Yes, indeed, the truth. For us truly is the greatest. There was something, something else I wanted to tell you about. Uh, oh right, the propulsion systems and habit, habit facilities are completed around 2,000 years ago, but that most important features were fit for purpose, which was all well and good. Except we all, we still knew absolutely nothing about the present-day people of theirs. Why not go and visit theirs? So, if you might ask, strictly forbidden. Where our technology and knowledge of the moon's true purpose exploded to for evil ones. The results could be disastrous. Then there were a few, few more rejoinings, and it became increasingly difficult to converse with Hyder. Before we might lose the ability to communicate with her altogether, we beseeched her to find people in the who could trust to help. We were quite fortunate everything worked up. How does it did. With the exception of routine inspections and maintenance, we remained asleep and waited. Hopefully, Hyden would find someone who would help us. Eventually, she did, and, her power was... and though her power was waning, we were able to speak to them directly for a short while. We shared with them everything we could, including our knowledge of the heavens and the means to travel here to the moon. We certainly didn't waste any time with what, with what we taught them. No more than a few years after that, our collaborators found a means to convey messages and supplies to us from down below. With all the letters, books, and other resources they sent, we learned enough to start making more meaningful changes to the moon. And now you're here, hopefully enjoying yourself as much as I am. I knew you'd 
You would like Greta Stenfell? I knew it. Thank you again for coming here. By the way, by the way, I know it's just a walk through the forest, but it meant, it meant a lot to me. There you are. I take it you've already received the grand tour. Then, the shame you missed it. Going away, I've been looking all over for you. I, uh, is this about the teleporter in the residential area? No, never mind that. We have more pressing matters at hand. I will be calling me an emergency meeting shortly. Your attendance is required. Really? I can't imagine why you need me there, but if you insist. We won't be waiting long, so... I'm sure you all have more than welcome to continue looking about the barrel. Now, come along, Roy Way. Before we arrived, we seemed to be, be in the midst of a rousing conversation with your guide. Did you learn anything of important? Exposition. You spent 12,000 years preparing for this. With the appoint appointed hour fast approaching, I certainly understand the restlessness, but still. It's the, it remains to be seen if the people of can be persuaded to evacuate when there is yet no signs of the final days. What's more, the technology of this place remains un it defies imagination. I doubt there are many who would re readily come to terms with living in such surroundings. Whoever these collaborators are, unless they are possessed in the world's most charming personalities or means to forcibly evacuate people, will meet with a great deal of resistance. Indeed. Even if faced with annihilation, the decision to forsake all one knows cannot be made lightly. Forgive me, friends, but I beg your leave. There is another matter which yet begs my attention. Of course, we can accompany you if you'd like. Nay, that would not be necessary. You will excuse me. It is clear now that difficult decisions lie ahead of us. Preparations for the evacuation of Theos is indeed crucial, and I am not yet willing to forsake our world and its reflections, and I trust I am not alone in my presence. You know any Andre seems strange to you? More than usual, I mean. I know he has a penchant, penchant for keeping his own counsel, but I'm not. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried. Would you go and see is all right? Michelle and I will remain here and see what else we can learn about the final days. If you hurry, perhaps we can check the kitchen. Uh, I'm going to cheat again. I go there, I need it. I think you get the freaking I get the bird. <laughs> okay. I guess you have six by now. Take a look at that. You got two eighth of her
There it is. I got the guy that There we go. Six foot more in that corner. Look at the other four. And then after I'm done streaming, I'll probably go ahead and do the uh, Ether Curtain quest. Offline. Our young Jay appears to be heading towards the entrance of Best Way Girl. Orianj ventures off into Murray Lamentorum for reasons unknown. You must tread carefully, otherwise you might sense your presence. Yeah, it's another follow quest. Follow Orianj from a safe distance. The objective will end in failure if you are noticed, or if you fail, fall too far behind. Should you fail to complete the objective, you may try again by returning to the designated location. Choke about here.
Thine arrival is timely as ever. I just Thou gave up. chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? Twas not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy? And duplicity? And Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life. I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for a mercy. Would that I could say the same for Menphilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain brokered by my hand were the scions robbed of a dear comrade and Flamine her beloved daughter. Two souls whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved even had I thought to protest. That protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives. Ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighs heavy on my mind. As does the memory of another lost to mine inaction. Dearest Moonbreather, who did face death unflinching, that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. In her hour of need, I did naught. Dutiful disciple of Louisois, ever looking to the greater good. Had I shut mine eyes and bid her live instead, Mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind, but could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught. Subterfuge and sacrifice. Mayhap the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. The calamity of Amorot was a tragedy beyond reckoning, one which must never again come to pass. Thus must we struggle, haunted by ghosts of those we have lost clinging to those we pray we can yet save. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? Faith in yourself and your decisions. Take heart to protect the wild those you can. Sage counsel indeed. I see. Wisdom as befits a great worm. Curious that he should think thee in need of such encouragement. Strange. Oh, Scarcely can I remember when deeper. last we spoke alone, and so candidly. I thank thee. For all my supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperitz proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. It would be to our mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. 
A concern I should be glad to address on the Scion's behalf. To dispense with all pretense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. But we cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. And today. In truth, my reasoning to traveling hither was to effect a plan of my own, a plan which may pave a way forward for us all. May, I say, for there is no guarantee for success. This is the reason I set out alone. That failure, should I to come, would be mine to bear about. Yet thou standest before me in her offered hand and open palm. It would be remiss of me to refuse thy amity. And so I ask, wouldst thou join me to my endeavor? Hold on, let me put on these uh, fresh new pair of shoes. I also need to dye them because the current color scheme is ugly. I thank thee for, for accompanying me. There's a simple pen, plan in truth. We shall not be long away from best ways to do Difficult decisions must needs be made in the coming days, and I never and I nevertheless believe we are all of one mind in our desire to save the people of the earth. To make clear our resolve in our moderates, I would offer them a gift, and it making doth require a more singular ingredient. Ah, an abundance of spongy, spongy. Excellent. I chance spy its aggression now when crossing Zodiac's erstwhile prison. And using a spell taught to me by the Nouveau, I believe that this shall suffice for the gift I should with fashion. Magic requireth considerable concentration, however, and might I prevail thee to stand watch for the sight of the That's all. Today in the nearby area, you see no signs of potential threats. This would be a good opportunity to see how Corianje is very. Six avions work. There. It is done. Magic ink. Every ounce is as efficacious as this. Rare in the occasion I would conjure my own, but it is nonetheless the most useful skill. 
A resulting product is admittedly possessed with no pre-natural properties, but it's used one of my own choosing, which I pray the Lopperts will appreciate. Amigos, Orange. Oh, thank goodness, I thought we you had been eaten or had fallen into a crater. Ishtola has been looking all over for you, Amigo. She says she, she needs to speak to you about something most urgent. Dire, even. She's also quite clear that she wishes to speak with Amigo alone, which I, means I'm afraid we must stand. We must stay behind, Oriange. Worry not! It just so happens we need your help with an errand. Delivering a package from the washer's pallet in the two best ways bureau is quite large and heavy, perhaps even too heavy for we poor lopperts, and we would be ever so grateful if you would lend us a hand. Suspicious. Are you insinuating or betrayed the trust of Highlands Chosen? Or worse, is anything to risk getting on, on your shoulder's bad side? She's clearly not one to cross, nor, nor made to wait. Now off you go! Hurry now, Tangos. I shan't be long. You know, I believe we do have Link Pearls. Hold on a second. Hey, Shilda. Um, did you have some sort of dire need for me? No? Okay. Just checking. Don't worry about it. Anyways. Uh, so I have four more ether currents, uh, which are around here somewhere. Well, before we go back into Best Ways Bureau, let's, uh...
movies over great greatest ends day and sale. We thought you would be, be away far longer. A dire emergency? I said no such thing. But as you are here, I would use your assistance for a small matter. Running away, a companion of her ways apparently has much to tell us of his final days. The problem, however, is that he's determined to live up to his name if he's going to stay still long enough for us to hold a conversation. So anything is likely to stop and rest, or perhaps there's a way to slow him down. What's the rush? I was thinking we could wait here, maybe enjoy a cold mug of carrot juice, and no? Well, well, if it's really that important, you can try using these balls, loose flesh. Not to be confused with the other thing. Thing. <laughs> Rainyway's most notable feature is the ins his incessant chatter, so you'll have no trouble finding him in a crowd, and when you do, try lobbing your balls at him. Crude, if it proves effective. He was here in the greatest greatest ends there. When last I saw him, let us split up and find him. Nature surrounding for running away. Move the camera as well as zoom in and out. Target right away and throw moose balls at him. Hey, are you running away? Yes, I'm running away. Do you? Do you mind explaining why you hit me in the face with your balls? Loose flesh? Yeah, you're something about the final days. I'm highly knowledgeable about the final days? Ah, the most ridiculous thing I've heard since I woke up. Who told you that joke? As if you had got time to think about the final days, would be so much to do before the Great Voyage! It's true that Hyrulean did impart to us some knowledge of the event, but I know about as much as any other leopard around here. Less, probably. I don't know why anyone would think it's funny to go around telling people I'm an expert, when I better hope that I don't get my paws on them. Sorry, I couldn't be much more help, but there's nothing else I've what to do. And I'm off! Yeah, I found running away. Useless. Running away. I could find neither hide nor hair of him. How did you fare? I found him, but he knows nothing. So he knows no more than the others. Care to explain yourself, growing way? Oh, well, uh, you see, I, uh... I misremembered! Yes, that's it, I misremembered! Terribly sorry about that. I'm uh, uh, afraid I'm drawing a blank, though. M might as a try. I can't remember who I was thinking of. No. 
On an unrelated note, what of Orianje? I assume you spoke with him earlier, and did he say what he was returning? Uh, let me wait. Take him to the Watcher's Palace. Let us wait to the Watcher's Palace with Living Way. Between growing ways, sudden lapse of memory, and our lack of other leads, mayhap our time will be better spent lending Orianje a hand. What? What? No, hold on a moment. Uh, it, it's all coming back to me. Yes, I remember. Uh, the information you're looking for is in the archives. Yes, that's where we'll find all sorts of useful knowledge, including the thing to the final days. It's called obviously he's trying to distract us. Well, they think for Okay. Our way is fitting with the nervous energies from excitement or worry. Oh, what to do, what to do? I promised to give you away, I would help, but. No, I promised I'd help, so that's what I'll do. The archives are on the second floor of the main plaza, the eastern. Follow me. I suspect the Lomperts are up to something. If there is ought to be learned with the final days, it's best we play alone. For now, at least. Alright. Wearing new set of gloves and look at that. They are awful. Awful looking. Must die, rolling berry bread. Yes. So good. Alright. We are at the That's exactly what we're at. This is a great place to stop. So that could be the quest off the line. I'm gonna do that as well as make dinner. I'm hungry and starving actually. Everything all day because I'm here that way. Plus, I'm out of mac and cheese casserole, so I need to make a new casserole, which is gonna be my vegetable beef medley or beef vegetable medley. I don't know. I keep getting the names like interchanged, but they're pretty much the same thing. It's vegetables and it's beef. And I'll be back tomorrow. No comes out loud this week, um, due to certain for certain circumstances. Uh, but we will hopefully be back next week. We have a year in review to do, and which we normally do in January. So uh, we started January off with our what's going on for December. So now we need to do our year in review, which is our next one. It's tradition to try to do that, but we can't do that. We're not doing to do that tomorrow. Uh, because of certain circumstances. So, week off! In the meantime, that's nice. Thank you for watching. Uh, catch me tomorrow. Get further along.